Hello, it is once again me recording voiceover from inside this tiny box. A few weeks ago, Connor, Christian, and I did a nine day content trip hitting four different colleges so we could film lead up content for the NWCA All-Star Classic. This video will be a behind the scenes look on what we do during these trips. If you've ever wondered what goes into making cool stuff like this happen, then this is the video for you. Just kidding, this video is mostly Christian making stupid jokes on camera and me laughing out of pity and not because I thought he was funny at all. He's not funny. No, but seriously, we spent a ton of time with Carter Starachi and Mikai Lewis. So if you have any interest in seeing what these guys are like when they're just hanging out, stick around. Our journey starts at the Austin airport at about 5 a.m. where Connor and I checked about a million bags worth of film gear. From there, we headed straight to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, home of Cole Matthews, the current number one ranked wrestler at 141 pounds. We started off by getting our hero shots with Cole. Then after that, we got our interviews with him and also some of the coaches and other athletes. And just like that, boom, stop one was done. These are 100 pound plates. But for me, it's not a big deal. <laughs> what was your favorite answer from Cole? Well, I guess basically everything uh, about the Real Woods match comes down to like talking about the throw. And he was talking about how Real's probably thinking that I'm not gonna throw him again, but he's basically like, but I can. <laughs> so let's just do it. <laughs> Alright, where next? Well, you've been begging for sushi since we got here. I've been begging so for sushi. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go get this guy sushi. He's a, you know, we like him, but he's needy. You know, <laughs> he's a little extra. I think that's what we would, we would agree. It's Tyler's extra. I think what you forget is I have control over this edit, so I can make you look <laughs> however well, I want. And, but while you're extra, you're an honest, and you're a good person, and I know you would never give a perspective that wasn't reality. So that's what's important, boom. No! I'm waving by the pit. I'm doing the best. Yeah. It's not heavy, it's awkward. I'm very, very strong, above average strength, I would say. And it's just, these are the things you gave me. It's not very conducive to going up a narrow, it's very narrow. I didn't even say anything, you just started I just, I just, <laughs> I see your face, and I know where you're going. And they bank this curse on me even faster. Wow, that's a strong man. From there, we headed straight to Penn State, where we would have our longest day of the trip because they had three different athletes competing in the All-Star Classic. Man, I had high expectations for it, and it, it was up there, for sure. Man, they were so cool, so down. It's cool to be in here. Everyone knows you don't get in here a lot, and the thing in, at the top of my mind was just the Starachi interview because he's just such a... You interviewed him for like an hour. I know, and uh, I didn't realize that, because it was just it was just kind of flowing. It, it was cool. Where are we headed now, Christian? We're getting some acai. No, after that. Oh. Well, you said now. <laughs> My bad. Well, don't do trick questions anymore. For, I'm gonna continue this. No more tricks. Okay, so after acai bowls, we're going to Carter Starachi's apartment. I believe he's gonna cook for us. For us? Well, he's gonna cook for, for us video. as an audience. Yes. You're not gonna get to eat his food. I, I didn't think so. I bet nice guy Carter, he may let us sample. I won't ask. And right. if you guys ask and embarrass me, I'm gonna be upset. Why are we shooting that though? Just to get kind of a, a little slice of life. Just like a little behind the scenes, day in the life. What's it like? Just to see Carter in an element outside of a wrestling mat or a wrestling room. He's gonna be there with his friends. How's he interact with his, his coterie, if you will. We're doing the same with Makai. They are the headlining match at the NWC All-Star Classic. We want to do some like, you know, behind the scenes storytelling, getting people really invested in Carter Mackay is people, not just wrestlers. So you kind of want to watch them wrestle on November 22nd. Carter is obviously a very interesting guy on social media, but you never know when social media amplifies a person's personality or mutes it. So we were excited to see what Carter would actually be like in real life. Got the whole setup. Yeah. Nice. What'd you guys just do? You guys just rolling around and stuff? They were dumping stuff on the cards, uh -huh. and then we went to pliables. Uh -huh. Eight and then came straight here. Nice. So it worked out perfect, perfect. timing nice. wise. Nice. I guess if he's leaving out that I uh, beat him to best two out of three and See? Beat four, so I beat him to that four twice. Four one in on you two. Man, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do a bit. I just, <laughs> I just got work. <laughs> this one best friend is Jalen. Jalen, what's, what's up? up? My other best friend Mateo. Yeah. That's Dr. Camacho. Oh man, oh, look at this. Jesus. Jesus. Well, what's the story behind these? They just look mean and angry, so I, that's kind of my mentality when I'm, I'm about to whoop some dudes, so I kind of like those. Where'd you get them? Where'd there's like get? a little, um, there's like a store downtown. It's like a little artsy store. They're actually really heavy, too. They weigh like, they're pretty heavy to grab them. Oh, yeah. Everything's heavy to Christian. So. <laughs> I, swear. I told Coach Joe we got to change the new line, but that's too soft. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like king of the jungle. Yeah, we need some, yeah, some type of meat line in there. <laughs> that's awesome. Cool? Yep. Where'd you go to high school? What was it like? 
Uh, I went to Erie Cathedral Prep. When we first got to Carter's place, we actually sat him down and did about a 45 minute interview with him about his friend Ian, who we're doing a documentary on. Awesome, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we're gonna get all this stuff in the corner. After that, we asked him to give us a tour of his place and then also explain his dynamic with the friends that he had there. So this is actually, you can see like this cord right here. Um, it's like hooked up and it's programmed somehow, but I'll put like my phone or my laptop here. It's like riding a bike uphill. Like this is not some ordinary, ordinary station bike. This is, this is the Olympic champ bike right here. This is, this is Dr. Camacho. He, um, he helps me out a lot with my mental with wrestling it's a lot more than just it's going on out there on the mat so he helps me out he's he's like a, a motivational speaker too and he's he's always giving me these uh these life ted talks and things like that and he sees almost everything because if, if i have like a problem with a girl like school like this guy knows so he knows exactly the road that's much more deeper than people see just going on the mat this right here is my best friend jalen uh jalen peterson he's a gymnast here he helps me out a lot with um my athletic ability, my gymnastics, my stretching. He's also my sparring partner. He knows how to fight too. Oh really? Yeah. yeah He's um. Like when I was like a freshman here, he was like, "Yo, like, let's go work out. Let's go work out." And I'm like, "Dude, like, you don't just go work out with Penn State dudes. You gotta be able to hold your own." And he was like, "Dude, I don't care who it is. Like, just line them up." And so then he's going at it with Roman, everybody, and like, he's not backing up from, like from anybody. And like, me and him are always going back and forth. But he can tell you more about that. But this is Jalen, and then this is my main man Mateo. He helps me out with my camera stuff. He's into all the spiritual stuff. He helps me out with like my emotional side. And so he's a, a really intelligent guy. We talk about books, business, life, wrestling. Everything. Every time I order, I tell him, "Give me the champ, champ special." I know it's the name. They're like, "Okay, so." So what do you want? <laughs> Jim, what's, what, how would you like compare like, gymnastics, wrestling, mentality, both like super intense individual sports? Like at least when I came here and I started hanging around Carter and I was hanging out with the wrestlers and stuff like that, it was more. I was more attracted to like their mindset and how serious they were. What I'll do is, is I'll try to wiggle you into a little, a little small workout. Come on, bro, let's hit pads for like five minutes. Right. And, then, and then you're gonna, you're gonna and then you get bloody nose. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got right. a video. My daughter's second birthday, me and him wrestling on the floor in my kitchen, probably a space this big. And my wife's screaming, stop, stop, stop. He don't stop, and I don't stop. So we just keep going. But it, it turned into a, come on, bro, let's just, you know, push him out. Let's wrestle. Before you know it, I'm getting flipped in my kitchen upside down. <laughs> We're just all super competitive with like anything, everything, like. You don't say. Yeah. yeah. Never, never stop. <laughs> I'll give you a little tour, I'll give you a little tour. So this is just a picture of me. I think this was um, last year's NCAA tournament. That might have been me walking out to the finals. Got a picture of Dave. This is pretty cool just because I see him in, in our room every single day. I, I see what he does. I see how he lives his life and he's completed everything in the sport. I think that's pretty cool just to, just to see that because I want to be an Olympic champ too. And then the balcony. This gives like a good view because in, in, in the mornings and things like that, like I usually get by like at five in the morning, um, I'll stretch and then I'll meditate and I'll visualize and then I'll come out here. It's like a, a good view over here. It's like all the mountains. At nighttime, you can see the stars. And then Rec Hall is actually, it's like the fifth building. It's like one, two, three, four, five. So Rec Hall is the fifth building. And I don't know, I, I think it's pretty cool. It's just, it's looking at Rec Hall because I spend most of my time there. And um, that's where, that's where the work gets done. So I don't spend too much time out here when it's cold though, cause it gets, it gets pretty cold. My room, this right here is something that like, it was a revenge match. So like this, uh, I don't know, that was a, a pretty cool moment. I was pretty yoked up as you can see. I was, I was, I was feeling myself in that one. So I keep that right here. So every, every time I get up in the morning, I look at it and like, maybe I should take that out of my room because every time I see that, I'm like, all right, like I'm gonna go work out again or I'm gonna go do something again. Cause I just, I get fired up so easily and I'm like easily motivated. So do you ever like have to pull back or you ever like, is there coaches or you ever like, yeah. right, I'm way overdoing it. Yeah, but I feel like overdoing it is just like mindset. Like when it's on the line, you show up and, and you're ready. So when it's time to compete, I'm ready and I'm ready to go. And maybe, maybe you are right. Maybe I am overdoing it, but just, I don't care if I'm overdoing it. Like you still gotta come stop this. I don't spend much time here. So I don't, I don't have any cool pictures or paintings. Like I'm up in the morning, I'm out at, at, at 6 a.m. And if you, if I'm not answering my phone, you wanna come find me, just go to the wrestling room. You'll see me there. You can't deny the fact of the elevation. Of what? You yes. and our lives. Oh. Uh, no, yeah, we were just talking about that, bro. Definitely. Sometimes I think I'm like, maybe I am a little too amped up all the time. But like, he helped me out a lot though, because like, it was almost like I was living in my own world. I'm just like, 
And like nobody ever, I've never met anybody in my life to like match my like energy. And he was like, bro, like you have to understand people around you don't have that. So like you have to like think about that. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't care. Like, if I'm hungry, I'm hungry. <laughs> Carter's so intense about it. Like about being number one and be, and like having a certain mentality that you can't even be around him. You'll feel demoralized because he won't, he won't respect you. I had a question. Just like, um, this is obviously like, like your circle. How small is, is your, is your circle? Carter? Uh, it's. It's very small. I, I have a like, I, I just don't trust people. There's like a lot of books that say like, hey, show me your five closest friends, I'll show you your future. You know what I mean? And a lot of the times when you're around certain people and you like hold them accountable, a lot of guys get their feelings hurt. What is your sleep schedule? Because it sounds like there's any given hour in the day you could be I was, uh, potentially training. I was, um, I was thinking about that and then I came across a Kobe Bryant video and he was saying, um, I don't know the background story. I could be wrong on this part, but like maybe his wife was in labor or his, his daughter was sick and like he was up all night at the hospital. They had a playoff game the next day and he got no sleep. He, he was like, do you think I care? I got no sleep? Either I drop 40 on this clown or I don't. Nobody cares that your mom's sick. Nobody cares that your that she's in the hospital. Like it's either like you win or you don't. And then, yeah, like life's, life's a lot bigger than wrestling, but it's just, I get sleep here and there. Like, um, <laughs> but, but, you don't win an Olympic title by sleeping, do you? I'm still learning, I'm still young, so we'll get there. <laughs> I mean, I, I just think, when you think of like successful wrestlers, you think like really regimented, like schedule, 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 like this is the time I do this, I sleep. It sounds like your whole thing is like a little, think, a little impulsive almost. <laughs> I think schedule is like, um, like a sign of fear. Like I have to do this at, th at this time of day. You know what I'm saying like, good. I feel better about my life. Now. That's the first time you've said something. I'm like, good. Schedules are bad. Just because, right. like, I don't, I don't know. For some people, like, they work out well, but I'm just like, you don't know when some dude's gonna grab your mom's butt in the street or something like that, and, and you have to knock his top off or something like that. Like, you, I, that's not a plan. That's not in some schedule. You gotta be ready all the time. So I just, I'm ready all the time. I'm sleeping. I'm, I don't know. I'm just when I feel like training, I train, and when I don't, I don't. But I usually feel like. Like training. <laughs> so yeah, it's not an act. Carter actually might be more intense in real life than he is on social media. But at the same time, I was shocked to see how grateful he was toward us and just how pleasant he was to be around. Overall, I actually really enjoyed spending time with him. I gotta figure out, I'm gonna turn around. I'll just get a little backwards, a backwards stroll. So we have to walk past state. I know it's hard to get stuff on us and stuff like that. Man, it's like, uh, you, you basic, you, you judge it on your experiences, yeah. right? And like. Three great guys. Yeah. It was awesome talking with y'all. That's, and obviously, you know, the work speaks for itself, which yeah. I'll do on the map. But, man, yeah, great experience. Yeah. It was awesome. How was your flow experience? It was. It was pretty awesome. I've always, I'm always like a fan of like, of like flow and things like that. Like, um, people give you guys like their own opinions and comments. I'm just like, dude, like, you can't please everybody. Like, they're just, they're doing their thing. They're, they're important to like their best of their knowledge. They're important. So like, I love flow. I'm a fan of flow. You guys help get the word out, post stuff, um, push things. You guys are doing good. I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of you guys. So, appreciate you guys, man. <laughs> appreciate you, Carter. Yeah. Thanks a lot, yeah. for real. For an interview like that with you, I was like, I know this guy's got a lot to say. Yeah. So I'm like, I did it like, I was like, I gotta be ready. Yeah, yeah. I gotta really yeah. know what I'm doing yeah. here. Appreciate everything appreciate you guys it. did. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much, Thanks, man. Hey, best luck in Thank the world. You. We'll be watching. Appreciate it. For <laughs> Michigan man, Tyler, you got to admit it. Yeah, These Penn State guys are pretty guy. cool. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to, like, you know, turn in your Michigan man badge, but you can recognize it, right? No, they're cool. They are really cool. And they all were super helpful and nice. I was going to say earlier, it was really cool when we walked in the room and we were like, what are you guys talking about? And they're all just like, I oh, was talking about how Carter has changed our lives positively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're like, just what? like, what? <laughs> Man, that's a different guy, for sure. Like, you don't come across a lot of people with that sort of mentality, focus, whatever, drive. It's really all he thinks about and cares about. It's not like an act. Like, normally, social media, like, pumps you up or makes you look like more of something. Whereas, like, it actually doesn't do him justice of how kind of insane, but also just like ridiculously competitive and driven and focused he is. So that's what I was thinking about. Oh, that's not going down. Wait, I thought we were just going here. This is where we came out. 40% of this job is just awkwardly lugging large cases around. Might be over 40%. Places. Yeah, it could be. Honestly, it's 80%. Hi. 
From there, we headed to the six bedroom Airbnb we had to rent about 40 minutes outside of State College because it was a Penn State game day. And hotels in State College were about $1,000 a night. So, welcome to Shroop Farms. Yeah, this is where we're staying? Uh, apparently, you booked it. I booked it? Yeah, you said five bedrooms or I'm not staying there. I said, all right, well, I'll have to check with finance, <laughs> see if we have budget. I actually kind of like it, it's pretty cool. Look at the smoke in the mountains over there, dude. That is not smoke, those are clouds. Thing. Wish we were here for like a weekend or something. <laughs> yeah. This is the life of uh, flow content. It's like you're nowhere for too long. But that's okay. Give me an MTV Cribs tour before you actually even know what it looks like. In my there. spot, we call it the farm. You know, small town living, you don't even shut your car door. Who's gonna take it? No one even lives here. Right here's a patio, you know, grill out, watch the game. You know how we do. After that, we wait at least 20, 30 minutes for safety reasons before we get in the pool after eating. There's a pool? Yeah, there's a pool. We keep it nice and green for. Uh, <laughs> We have our reasons. We have our reasons. Okay, also, someone actually lives on this property. Did you know this? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah. messing with you. I don't think it's in here. I think it's in that thing there. But Let's, let's go through here. I just don't want to happen upon a person. Yeah, I don't either. Oh, I don't, and I don't want them to be scared either. We are physically imposed. Yeah, I ain't messing with me, but you look vulnerable. Okay. So this, this obviously, we know why this is here. Yeah, everyone knows. Well, I don't think we have to run. And it's one of those that goes without saying type of things. <laughs> Where we cook out. This is lovely. I don't want to go in the barn. You're not going in the barn. Wait, you frightened? <laughs> you think Moses is in there? <laughs> yeah, dude. Moses? Look at that thing. That's insanely freaky. Have you not been in a barn before? That's a this is a very nice barn. I'm from California, dude. I've never been dude. in a barn. Actually, read a book sometime. California has some of the most vast farmland in all of America. <laughs> That's true. Oh I God. did know that, but I'm from Southern California. Oh, uh, so Cal, all right. <laughs> no, we're going. No, we're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm go I am literally going. You can go. Come on. You're really gonna wimp out? Big tough guy? Dude, this is like the beginning to the Blair Witch Project no, right now. <laughs> no. This could be the home of another person. The barn? Right. No, 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 behind you. Don't turn around. Sorry. Just kidding. <laughs> My feet are getting wet. Did you hear that? It's just a it's wildlife. It's probably a deer. Why are you such a coward? <laughs> I hope this is a bit. It's not a bit. I'm terrified. What do you think might be in here? A literal monster. Oh, yeah. any literal monsters? I'm in a working barn. So this is where animals would be. All right, we gotta go upstairs now. Upstairs. Would a scary barn have a semi-working clock radio? <laughs> Oh, we got nunchucks. What? A little nunchucks. Oh my god. Wait, no. Candles? Nunchucks. Why are you saying nunchucks? Because that's, that's a funny way to say it wrong. No, you're doing, you didn't even know that was wrong it's until a, I just pointed that out. nunchucks. I know that. <laughs> what if you fall through the floor right now? Well, that would be quite a surprise for all of us. But at the same time, killer content. So we, we press on. Oh, dude, I swear I almost just fell through the floor. Bro, you're not gonna fall through the floor. Check out my hog, bro. Okay, maybe I bought in a little too hard to the scary barn propaganda that I see in movies. The barn was pretty chill. The haze in the barn. You know that cliche? No. You don't know? Oh my gosh. I'm 24, I'm young and spry. That's not an age thing. Oh, you interview someone before a big match or NCAAs? They're always like, oh, you know, the haze in the barn. It means the work is done. I promise you, someone before the NCAAs or some big tournament this wrestling season is going to say the haze in the barn. I promise you. It happens every year. It happened last year. Yeah, probably someone old as hell. No! <laughs> it's empty. This is a terrifying basement. Well, this is the beginning. Oh, we going down there. Let's of go. Of we are. This is... This is scary. No, it's not. You should see the basement in my childhood home if you think this is scary. This is you should try looking it's, at your face. It's just terrible. Yeah. <laughs> His face is gross. Okay. Well, we've got plenty of this um, in case. Yeah. CP, you should have used this thing. I've been like. There's oh, literally a yeah. flashlight this entire time. This will be the sec. This will be the two shot. It's Connor. You know about two shots? It's like there's one cam and then the B cam. Is I know. The two shot. I know how two shots work. Yeah. All right. Well. Except normally both shots are horizontal. This will make it look more authentic. <laughs> I can't believe I had to explain that. Hey, Door You're City over here. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Time for me to go blow it up. See ya. We were done with Pennsylvania. In our next stop. Jersey, baby. All right, sorry, that was, that didn't feel right. Our next stop was Princeton, New Jersey. Our main reason for stopping at Princeton was to shoot with Quincy Monday, who's gonna be wrestling David Carr. This matchup is particularly interesting because their dads actually had an insane rivalry back in the 80s. 
It was really fun getting to hear from Quincy about the legacy that's on the line, but also about how he didn't let the pressure of his dad's legacy weigh down on him. We shot interviews with the other coaches and athletes right up until we had to clear the mats for their wrestling practice. They actually let us stick around and film their practice, and it was pretty cool to get some insight on their program. When Coach Ayers took over, their record was actually 0-37, and, and now they're regularly a top 20 team, and they actually put two guys in the finals last year. It's always cool being around programs that have experienced growth like that. Another day at the office, all of that. After practice, we packed up and headed to our next destination, Virginia, home of the man, the myth, the legend himself, Christian Piles. I'm not gonna lie to you, I really did not wanna like Virginia just because Christian's from there, but when Connor and I first got in, he recommended a hike that we do, and when we got to the top, I had to accept it. Virginia is pretty tight. After that, we headed to Blacksburg, home of Virginia Tech University, and also Bryce Andonian and Makai Lewis. All right, so we roll up at Virginia Tech, and Coach Brewer's like, all right, you came on the right day. Coach Freyer is doing his birthday weight cut birthday today. So he's like, look at him. We're going, let's go see what come on. This is like lunatic behavior. But he's a lunatic. What's up? Happy birthday. So what is happening? Why are you doing this? Wake birthday cut. wake birthday up. Wake well what do you have Every to get year. down to? You have a goal or is it just like I'm trying to lose 10 pounds. Okay. Today. Right now. Right now. Alright. Very normal. Well cool man. Yeah. Well I don't want to Welcome keep to Blacksburg. Great to be here. We'll catch up with you later. Have a good, have a good wake cut. See ya. He's smiling. Before we shot with the athletes, Christian demanded that we get a hero shot of him first, which was weird. But then we shot our content with Bryson McKay along with a bunch of other interviews. After that wrapped up, we headed to a local pizza spot with Bryson McKay to get to know them a little bit better. At one point, I asked Bryce what McKay is like when he's around people he's comfortable with. He's goofy. Yeah. He's goofy. <laughs> yeah. How's yeah, he goofy? Really... I don't really show it. But, yeah, you don't see it on the cameras, man, but he's a funny guy. Why are you goofy? Then why don't we see it on the cameras? Uh, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> it's like when I'm, like, I got to get comfortable with people, you know? So, like, cameras and, like, I'm not, like, all the time with, like, people, who, I guess, who interview me or, yeah. like, have a camera in front of me. So, like, I don't really show it. But, like, you know, if I'm around a group of friends and you just like come up to me with a camera, like you're going to see me. So. Like I might be the one who gets the most mad playing Mafia. What's Mafia? Those people cheat. You don't know Mafia? Come on. I know what it is, but for the Man. sake of the video, what's They mafia? need to know what Mafia is. Right, so it's a card game. There's probably about like, say there's like eight guys, but you're trying to figure out who the killer is in this group and like, you, would, you can't put a thousand posts over your ear and not hear this guy. He's a, he, he gets loud. Okay, so I'm not the loudest, but I will say, I will say this, it's when Corbin, Sam, and sometimes Brewer tried to gang up on me, and I'm like, yeah, you're the killer. No, I'm not. That used to get to me, especially when Corbin used to, like, say something, because it was like, he knows what he's doing, and everybody else would just feed into it. So you're the loudest, but are you the best? I feel like I'm one of the best. Like, when I'm Mafia, people don't know. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Nice. What was it like wrestling at Bound Brook? They've had a lot of really good wrestlers. You had Camp Latano, you've had uh, Glasgow was your, your teammate. What was it like That's training there? Uh, no, nah, it was fun, especially like having like that type of sort of wrestling room where it was like every person was good. I remember my freshman year, I'd be wrestling a 60 pounder. I only weighed like 132. But like he wanted to wrestle me because he like just knew like how dedicated I was, but also like I don't know. Like back then, I was just like so, just like aggressive and nasty. So like the older guys, like I was just always want to just like, you know, mess with them, just just prove to them like I'm, you know, like I'm a big dog in the room, even though like I'm this freshman and no yeah. one knows. Right? So you're very competitive naturally. Yeah, yeah. It gets the best of me sometimes, so I gotta like dial it back. That's why in mafia. Mafia, I was gonna say. I gotta like. I can't play too many games. <laughs> then it gets a little bit. The Mafia life is not for everyone. Is there someone that everyone like picks on on Mafia? When I used to play Mafia, we always had one person we just eliminated first every time. Cody. <laughs> it's Cody. Cody, Howard. Howard. Cody nope. just because he, uh, he Cody reacts. Funny. He reacts funny and also he's terrible too. I love Cody <laughs> to death, but he's he is really bad at that game. And I'm not. No, Cody's the loudest. I'm not the loudest. Cody is definitely the loudest. So. No. Eventually Bryce went around and asked each of us what the best pizza we'd ever had was, but I'm almost positive that was just an excuse for him to deliver his shocking opinion that Russia has the best pizza. I'm still in this box, by the way. Just in case you were wondering. Haven't left yet. Uh, when I went to Ufa, Russia. Russia? Yeah. 
Your favorite pizza place was in Russia. Yeah. They had a, and it was called, um, this guy. It was like a, I want you to say it. Say, my favorite pizza place is in Russia. <laughs> Get exposed. Please don't say that. <laughs> yeah. And Please I've don't been to New that. York City. I've had I I've had it. New York City pizza recently. Rice is gonna you start can't. wrestling. I want you to look right in this camera lens and say it. Put yeah. me on the spot. Man. Right next but to you. I got you. You did open the question. Right next to your New Jersey yeah, teammate. Right. <laughs> you yeah, know no, they they get all salty over their food over there. Yeah, yeah but no, yeah, Russia Russia might have the best pizza. <laughs> no. 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 Uh, what's your favorite pizza place? Just New Jersey pizza. Like, is better than New York pizza? Uh, well, to be honest with you, I never really had New York's pizza. What? Like, I never had it before. I never like really went out of my way to get pizza in New York because like it's pizza in New Jersey. I just feel like it's slept on. But no, these are a lot more uh, peaceful than the one wings we did on camera the other day. Show you guys. Did you do, like feature. a hot ones episode? Yes. Yeah. Literally the Actually, hot. Actually, like you did the hot ones challenge. The, the yeah. Final sauce and everything. So every uh, every year we have these feature pieces that we run in Castle and throw on social. Oh, during duels. Yeah, during duels. So this year, we. are not playing that during duels. We, yeah, oh, not, we are. Yeah, we <laughs> are. We are. <laughs> you cry? I, I oh, had he tears. cried. I wasn't like crying as and I was sad. I was like, I couldn't stop the tears. <laughs> a lot of f bombs are dropped, and Bryce doesn't cuss usually. Yeah, I don't cuss a lot, but yeah. I was, I was upset. Yeah. I ate that whole wing. We only had to take like two bites, so you could have took like two small bites. I won too, just to brag. But why'd you eat the whole thing just to flex? <laughs> No, I did well, a little bit, but. <laughs> Makai and I even bonded over our love for anime, sort of. I like legitimately feel like anime has made me a better person. Do you feel like that? Yeah. I'm being dead serious. I'm being dead serious too, man. <laughs> this guy is for real. He's about that life. Like, I agree, but like, <laughs> it just caught me off guard. <laughs> I mean, sometimes like, especially if I'm trying to have like a lazy day, I could like binge like anime. Now, I used to do that with, um, like I said, like Soul Eater, Hunter x Hunter. This kid I coached before the state tournament, he dyed his hair blonde because mm -hmm. he was going, he was going Super Saiyan. He oh, freaking really? won state. I remember uh, my brother in high school, his uh, team, they all dyed their hair blonde. But I just remember how dumb my brother looked. So that reminded <laughs> me. Of, Have like, you ever dyed uh, your hair? No, I was going to though for the season, but I don't know yet. For this season? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What colors were you considering? Maybe maroon. just all maroon for like a match. Maybe national show up. It was just like, oh. I could be like Sully, just go bald. What was your first impression of Coach Roby? To be honest with you, I kind of thought he was mean because he didn't talk. And mm -hmm. this is when like he was an assistant at the time. So he didn't really have to talk a lot. How did that perception kind of change over time as you got to know him? Uh, when he actually started talking to me. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but this was when I was getting recruited compared to like, like when he became the head coach, that's when he talked to me more. Getting on campus and like being able to like, you know, have like conversations and yeah. like being able to communicate. Uh, that's when I knew like, yeah, um, it was the right thing. Cool. I have a, a question. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. And this is also obviously going to be like super highly edited. But during our interview today, you kind of mentioned that you fell out of love with wrestling and then that you've been kind of falling back in love with it. What has that like taken and what does that journey kind of look like? Um, just coming up with reasons why I started and then reasons why I did fall in love with the sport and then um, what the sport gave to me over time. So like experiences like, you know, traveling overseas, actually being able to go to college and just realizing how all those things like made me into like, you know, who I am now. So I feel like that was like a big part of it. When you love wrestling, are you wrestling better? I mean, yeah, of course. I, I feel like anybody would wrestle better if they like is passionate and actually love it. That's like me being like, I'm gonna work this job, but hate it, you know? I'm gonna not do my act absolute best compared to me being like, oh, I love this job. You know, I'm like happy to be here every single day. You know? Did you go into NCAAs your retro freshman year believing that you were gonna win that tournament? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And like everybody could tell you that, like, like I didn't necessarily have to say it to everybody, it's just more so like people could tell by the way I was, you know. Is it an advantage for you? Like you follow sport to an extent, but you're not like, you know, following every match and everything. Is mm -hmm. it does it help you not like build up your opponents? Like Vincenzo Joseph was at the time a two time champion beat Imar twice in the mm -hmm. finals, like no one's really picking you in that moment. Is does it is it an advantage for you that you're like 
You don't put guys up on pedestals like that? Yeah, because like if you do do that, then it's like, you know, you already lost. Because like you holding this guy to this high standard when really like you're just as good as him. Like I wouldn't tell Bryce at all. Like Yanni was in his weight class last year. Like if Bryce was to come up to me and be like, oh yeah, like Yanni's this good, this and that. I would like easily tell him like, well, you're just as good. So yeah. like, you don't have to talk about that person like that, yeah. you know? So I feel like for me, like, yeah, I know they're good and like, I do respect them for what they accomplished, but I'm not gonna sit here and just admire them. Cause right. it's like, I know I'm good. You know, like, I just wanna, you know, show people how good I am. Great recommendation, guys. This yeah. is awesome. I didn't expect the conversation to go. <laughs> Anime went all over the place. <laughs> it, it gets me out of my comfort zone, you know, yeah. having, I got cameras around me, following me. Nice. But uh, it was nice. It was good to get to know you guys and to actually like let you guys hang out with us and like see everything. Kai, thanks so much, man. Right, Appreciate it. You. Bryce, Appreciate you good coming. seeing you. Can't wait to have you guys in in, uh, in Austin. It's gonna be mm -hmm. awesome. We'll see you then. All right, thank see you. Ya. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Mm -hmm. Man, that's a wrap. The trip is over. Kind of went fast. I don't know. What'd you think? I thought it was, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Wow. Goosebumps. <laughs> Oh no, Sweet Prince is coming because... because oh my. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. <laughs> Trip's over. You gotta dance. Trip's over, but I'm also pumped to get to edit in the stuff we shot because it's probably some of the best stuff we shot. I feel like every place we left, good. we were like, man, I couldn't have gone much better. I was gonna say something that was really cool too. I feel like you're probably more proud of this than we are was when we were setting up and Cody Brewer was like, oh, Flo's cool now, you know? It's like they actually have production and like yeah. they're making us look really cool. And I was like, damn. Yeah, he's like, we, they didn't have that they when didn't I was They didn't have this competing. when I was there and stuff. And I no. thought that was a really cool moment. It's like, dang, you guys have come a long way, you know? It's Yeah, definitely come a long way. And that's and that's why, like, it's special for me, like, Virginia Tech, like, I remember sitting Matt's side with a handy cam, just like, we weren't even, I don't even know if we were allowed to do that, but like, right. Tech kind of wanted, the coaches <laughs> wanted us there, and so we just went, and it wasn't like televised or anything, so it's like, all right, you just sit Matt's side and commentate the matches, like, right there. And so, like, to go from that on my stupid handy cam, yeah. which I still have, um, to, to now, like, the stuff you guys can do is crazy, because, like, it's crazy how far it's come, and, like, sometimes I sort of forget. Tyler can do a lot of things I can't do. Wow. Force. I'm gonna end the video on us fist bumping and there's just gonna be an explosion. Do you have that kind of CGI experience? Yeah. Wow. You, you hired a professional. Michael Michael Bay. <laughs> You're just gonna watch that video and just be like, look at this animation. Look at this animation, bro. <laughs> and that's the end of the video. Now will someone please let me out of here? They lock me in here until I finish these. Hello?